Why? By the way, it's completely anonymous to those who are in the class. So uh, you're safe and protected. Anyway, happy Sunday. Greg here. Got a little frog in my throat. So um, <clears throat> I think I'll sing an octave lower this week. Anyway, it's great to see you and we're going to practice peace. And how do you do that? Well, sometimes when you start learning anything, it's sort of difficult and tedious, like scales on the piano or learning uh, to play the guitar or learning a new language. <clears throat> but if you stick with it and you make it through a few milestones, then what was initially tedious and difficult becomes more flowing, a little smoother, same with meditation. It, after a while, it becomes pleasurable. You look forward to it. It's all you want to do. So we'll close our eyes and let's do a three count breath together. Exhale all the air out. Inhale one, two, three, release. One, two, three. Inhale one, two, three, release. One, two, Three. I think I think we got that on your own. Three in and three out. Letting your whole life reduce down to that. <clears throat> Good. Now at the end of your next exhalation, release the breath count back to just regular breath, your body breathing you, eyes are closed, practicing peace. Now, I would like to tell you some of the benefits of practicing peace, not all at once, but one is when the mind quiets, we often get answers to dilemmas or situations or problems that otherwise we can't hear, our mind is too busy in the noise of the problem to hear the still small voice of the solution. So that's a good thing to remember by practicing quiet. If there's a, tr a problem, dilemma, situation we're wrestling with, we can hear and answer a solution. So we're not just wasting our time. This is the most productive thing we could do. Okay, and we'll chant an ohm together to vibrate together and I'll see how my froggy voice is doing. Remember you're muted, so belt it out if you'd like. Inhale. Ho. Feel that spread from your head to your toes. The body empties out. The mind settles. Listen for the answer. Is it the booming sound of the voice of God? Generally not, although it might be. It could be a feeling. It could be an impulse. It could be the rustling of the leaves. But the answers, my friend, are blowing in the wind. By definition, if we're really wrestling with a situation, we can't hear the solution. We have the volume of the problem turned way too loud. So we practice peace.
Okay, today's prayer, affirmation, invocation, intention, depending on your angle. God, love, source, spirit, infinite, higher organizing principle, IHOP for short. Allow us to hear the still small voice of solution that perhaps we've been drowning out with the volume of our problem. Amen, Om. Shoulders, one, two, three. If you got a big problem going on, you got a big solution coming, it's just a matter of time. Six, seven, eight. All right, reverse course with those shoulders. We're gonna do some joint juice together, it's legal. You can get high on your own supply. I love getting high. I just do it on my own supply. Six, seven, and eight. Good job. This is not to say I didn't like to used to get high on something else, but after a while, you learn it's all on the inside. Lace your hands, draw your thumbs down the side of your throat, your neck, I should say. I should say. Four, five, feels good, doesn't it? Practicing peace can feel good. Six, seven, eight. Now take your opposable thumbs underneath your jawbone. Relax your face into your hands. Massage your thumbs underneath your jaw. Eyes closed, face dropped. Calm and peaceful souls. There's a little button in there that if you find it, you can just pop your head right off. It's super cool. You can pop somebody else's head on and try their reality. You'd want yours back, I bet. Okay. Well, that's good. Take your hands out and right fingers back left corner of your head. Tilt pumpkins to the right. Drop your chin. Tilt, drop, tilt, drop, tilt, drop, tilt, drop. And this is the pose for drooling out of the right side of your mouth. Some people think drooling is offensive. I find it a compliment when people drool in my class. Shoulders relaxed. Not over me, of course, just generalized drooling. <laughs> Not that many people drool over me. Oh, it feels good to stretch peacefully and patiently with your pals. All right, and we'll click our coconuts back up, left fingers back right corner, tilt left, and drop your chin, tilt, drop, tilt, drop, tilt, drop. Eyes closed, mouth soft. Wear the expression on your face you were wearing before your parents met. What were you doing before your parents had a gleam in their eye? You were looking at a catalog for your future parents. Hmm. Which parents best teach me the lesson that I need to learn this time? We are calm and peaceful souls. Okay, click your head back up. All right, and we'll drop our chin. We'll just take our head around four times slowly. One. There's ecstasy in these movements if we bring ourselves to them. Three. And four. Other way. One. Two. Three. Okay, this is called Jalandhara Banda, where you relax your head down. And you just leave it relaxed. Your spine is tall. Your shoulders are soft. And 
We make ujjayi breathing, soft, whispery seashell sound at the back of our throat. There's nowhere to go. We're here. Where else could you go? It's now. When else can you be? Well, I could be in the future, imagining being on a yacht or something. But when you're on a yacht in the south of France, then you're thinking about being in New York shopping. It's always something, isn't it? So let's try here now. What an interesting notion. Peace is a practice. Okay, we'll chant an om together because we're mostly vibrational creatures. Inhale. Om. Allow quiet to come over you so the solution to problems can just float in. Of course, maybe you have no problems. Everything is perfectly harmonious and copacetic, but I've got a sus sneaking suspicion there's something going on that we could bring peace to. Otherwise, we probably would leave Earth plane in a whirlwind of light and go someplace else. Okie doke. Switch across your legs, my friends. Pull back on your hips a little to get on top of your sit bones. And how about a halfway forward fold? What do you say? Let's go halfway today. The middle ground that Buddha spoke, spoke of. Buddha had the unique experience of being unbelievably, fabulously gifted and wealthy at the start of his life. That didn't work. And then he tried asceticism for a couple of years. That didn't work. And so he settled on the middle ground and that worked. If you're extreme like me, it's unusual to try the middle sometimes. Now fingertips, long spine, <laughs> look forward. Hi, beautiful friends. Exhale, deepen. Just folding over your pearl. Nowhere to go. Shoulder. If I was there, I'd put my hands on your shoulder blades. Relax your shoulder blades apart. Drop your chin. Stop thinking. Start being. Think how distracted the ocean could be if it was only its waves, all those ripples and tsunamis and floods, and it would forget it was the ocean. Okay, walk your hands over to the right, just a couple of paw prints. <clears throat> This is not the who's the bendiest person in the class class. This is, let's see where we can go in consciousness class. Inhale. And we'll paw print over the side. We're looking at lives from both sides now. Now, as you go over to the left a little, keep your right hip relaxing. Soft around your neck, back, and shoulders. Eyes are closed so you can feel your feels. Catch up with yourself. Oh, here comes my little baby, Puma. Hi, Puma. He says hi. He just got his cone off. I had to wear a cone for a while.
Oh, hi, baby. Oh, my goodness. Okay, walk your hands back to the center. God sent me a kitten so that I could practice peace in the midst of utter abject hysteria. Go back to this cross, my friends. <clears throat> Inhale. Oh, he's up in his loony bin. Exhale out. He loves watching the humans do yoga. He thinks it's hilarious. Up your back, behind your neck, and poof. <clears throat> poofing on your own is good, but simultaneous poofing is splendid to poof three. And one more. Rhythmic meditation movements designed to get us out of our left brain to figure everything out. Have you noticed you haven't figured everything out yet? Arms forward. Think you ever will? Pull in. Rush. Trying to measure our world with our just our brain is a challenge. Measuring life with just our brain is like weighing something with a thermometer. It's the wrong instrument sometimes. Around to the front. Good now. We're gonna cup our hands by the side of our side, drop your chin, and I invite you to feel receptive, open, open-minded, willing, allowing, no barriers to wisdom, love, insight, flowing easily and naturally into your life as it's designed to. The great enemy, of course, is resistance, struggle. I am open to possibilities. I am understanding more will be revealed. Push arms out. Go wide, circle back here, rush forward. And back and brush. Floss your kidneys once a day. Go back here, brush them kidneys. And we'll inhale up together and out. All right, now I'm going to put my hands behind me. I'm going to be attacked any second. Now my little fingers are on the inside. My thumbs are on the outside. I'm going to walk my hands back a little, bring them slightly closer together. And then notice my elbows bending backwards as I sink my chest and drop my chin and, and sink into the hammock of my internal world, just lean back into your wrists and hands until they say, wow, I feel this. And be patient. The pose begins the moment you want to get out of it. It's like a marriage or an intimate relationship, right? It begins the moment you want to leave, right? Honeymoon phase is super easy. Then let the games begin, sink in. I bet you're feeling it, uh, amplifying sensation of stretch and sensation. Okay, now. Bring your hands in a little, exhale all the air out, and inhale, we're going to inflate our bottoms up. Bottoms up, cheers for rears, lift up. And sink down. Now we need a forward fold with our legs crossed alternately, so switch it around the this way, the this way, that's some good grammar. English is my second language. I have no first. 
Halfway down, kids, close your eyes. One minute to just be in it. Watch your mind, watch where it goes, watch its games and its distractions and its attempts to suck you into something. Okay, now from your fingertips, I want you to be curious turtles and extend your spine out long. Drop your shell back and extend out. And forward fold for 42 more seconds. 42 is the answer to everything, you hitchhikers, you. Now we're going to sway our hair, hair around, or our hay, depending on the look of your hair today. And we're going to pretend that we're a kelp bed off of Monterey, just swaying together like people swaying together. I'm a calm and peaceful soul. Everything is always working out for me. Okay, hold still 10 seconds, no movement, no fidget, no wiggle, no scratching. Next inhale, come on up. All right, I'm gonna go back to my uh, more familiar cross. <clears throat> I'm doing something very sneaky. There's a method to my madness. We're really, we're not doing anything. This is waiting for Godot, so to speak. And if we keep keep up this waiting and this watching, something happens. Arms out, palms up, touch your elbows together, lean into your hands, drop your chin, and be content. The yoga word is samtosha. I am content with the content of my life. I am content with the current content of my life, even that which I'm not content with. I'm on a journey. Nothing ever stays the same. Things are always unfolding. This too shall pass. <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't need to get too high or too low. I can learn to enjoy the middle ground of existence. And when I want to go screaming off into an eddy and lose my mind, that's fun too. <clears throat> All right, and right arm out and just in and out, in, in rotation, out rotation. People are always opening their hips in class. How open do you need, really need your hips? Maybe we need our shoulders open too, where all the tension and trauma and tribulation is accumulated one more now take your arm behind your back careful with this one just waddle it up a little it may get stuck about here that's okay keep waddling it up if you can self heimlich <laughs> now other arm up put this hand on your head or connect your hands if you can and scrub your shoulders around. Just do you, your version. Don't do my version. You might have an aversion to my version. Like a version. <laughs> Bothered for the very first time. All right. 
and release that. Now, put the back of this hand in your armpit. That's an odd position, isn't it? Now, reach and grab your wrist and your elbow, it's called, and stretch the stretch your wrist, drop your chin, close your eyes. Now, I want you to be unusually, almost ecstatically happy for no reason. Let the natural bliss of being bubble up into your consciousness. When we were born, we weren't giving it, given an owner's manual for our body. But yoga is the owner's manual. Good. Now come up and out. Ooh, yeah. Okay, now this arm out. And take it around, in and out. See how much more it moves when you get it all greased up? Grease. I won't sing any grease. I won't torture any more with singing. Now all the internal rotation, arm behind your back. I'm gonna cram it up there a little bit. This is the yoga principle of krama, not karma. Krama, cram it up there. This one goes up. And then hand on top of your head, behind your head, or connect the dots. And I want you to scrub. I want you to scrub it out. Scrub one out. Ugh. Other way. You feel a little jammed up there? Maybe that's the stuff that happened in the third grade that you haven't spent $500,000 on therapy to dig out yet? <laughs> Save your money. Just hang out with me. I'll solve all of your traumas for you for just pennies a day. Good. Good job, you guys. Now from here, bring this wrist up into your pit. This is a pit stop. And grab this elbow. Can you pull your elbow into your side? I could. It would break my wrist. Drop your chin. Be unusually happy for no reason. The problem with happiness for most people is it's contingent. My happy is contingent on something. So let's have non-contingent happiness. Drop your chin. All right. And mercifully, we get to do this now. All that other stuff. Now we get the ecstasy, the euphoria of rolling our paws around. Remember Terry Garr and Young Frankenstein? Would you like to go for a roll in the palms? Other way. Isn't this a cool movement? Woo! This helps me play scales on the piano poorly, but I'm getting better. Shake your paws out. Uh, get away from me, stinking thoughts and painful patterns of perception and abject ignorance. Flippy flops. Say hello to bright new perceptions, new ways of seeing things, new connections, new collaborations. Cup your hands at your heart and... We are calm and grateful souls. Okay, and then we'll put our hands on our knees. We'll chant a throaty uh, Lauren Bacall kind of cigarette smoky ohm together, and then we'll start doing something else. You ready? Big inhale.
imagine a little wave that remembers it's the ocean. What a remembrance that would be. Okay, all fours, kids. We're going to get on all fours together. <clears throat> Do some nice rhythmic animal movements together like cats and cows. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, then one of my very favorite is yin poses. We're going to take our right arm out to the side. We're going to bring it underneath. We're going to come to our right ear, right shoulder. Going to keep the left hand down. Butt is high. And this is a twist. It's a forward fold. It's an inversion. We're kind of upside down. It's a neck stretch and it's a face smash so that you can smile bigger. And we're just going to rest in this for about a minute. If you need to fall asleep, I've been putting people to sleep for years. Relax. Now, this is optional. If you feel like you don't need your left hand supporting, you can take it up and around behind your back and tuck your hand inside your right thigh. That's fully optional. Now, if we're new to this pose, the way every, all, everything's in the wrong place, it feels like you're being having your face smashed down into the floor and you're... You feel like a wheelbarrow that's being pushed forward, but after a while, you the weight starts to redistribute, the joints open up, and it becomes a self-correcting proposition. And of course, this is exactly when my cat will come by and probably attack my face. Yep. Hi, baby. How you doing? What's going on? There's a lot going on in this pose, if we're perceptive enough to sense it. Two more breathings together, breathe in the same air, even the people you hate are breathing the same air. That's kind of a humbling thought. God, please take the air away from the people that I hate. <laughs> Uh, that's not a good prayer. Okay, now get your hand out. Get your hand out. Here comes a hand out. Come up. Okie doke. Now, before we do the other side, we'll turn our hands backwards. So external rotation, thumbs to the outside, little fingers on the inside. Dos gatos y dos vacas in espanol, por favor. The Espanol Muy Mal. Now lean back into your wrist, drop your chin, close your eyes. The back of your neck stretch. You've been carrying too much tension in your neck. I've been talking to your angels. They're saying you need to relax your neck. <clears throat> Rokey dokey, and we'll turn our paws forward again. <clears throat> I'm going to do the old dog spin around here. And now left arm out. Zing. And thread the needle. Thread the needle. Mm. Left ear, left shoulder, right hand. <clears throat> and you're just going to, you're just going to be plowed down into the floor, right? Stretching the shoulder, releasing your neck, smashing your face, tilting your tail feathers up, kind of upside down. Optional, 
right arm way up, he tucks behind my back. And on a good day, I can get my right hand inside my left thigh. Whatever. Now, this may not be the most comfortable thing you've ever done in your life, but <clears throat> part of life is learning to be uncomfortable, isn't it? Have you ever been uncomfortable? Ah, cat attack. Hi, baby. I got him a GPS collar so he can go outside and I get an alert if he's gone too far. See how we're really not doing anything? See how we're really just practicing presence and peace and love and calm and tolerance together? Peace is a practice. Nobody, Everybody wants to be peaceful, but nobody wants to practice it. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. Okay, take your right arm out from bondage. Bring it down. <clears throat> Okay, now the movement that makes the world go around. We'll walk our knees back, hands forward. And we're just going to undulate our undercarriages around. We're going to circle our bottoms. We're going to circle the wagons. Now, your circles can be kind of small, and I call them puritanical circles. Or you could make 1960s Golden Gate Park circles. You could make Victorian circles. You could make Wiccan circles. Take your circles around your size. The other way, you get circles of your own understanding. Woo! <clears throat> I feel sorry for people that don't circle their hips around a few times, at least a week, because then you become what in technical terms is called a tight ass, and it's not good. Three, two, one. Good job. Now, <clears throat> on your front parts, teenagers texting their friends pose. Now, I'd like to open up your spinal column so that the Shiva Shakti energy can run up and down the middle channel of your spine and bring ecstasy rocketing out through your crown chakra are you down with that so from your elbows keep your knees down and just lift your tum and your bum drop your chin and if you just lift your tum you're gonna bring some space into the crammed up bones of your spine and this is going to open physical space for the prana energy to run up and down your spine <clears throat> Yay. Good, you guys. Now from here, we're going to do a famous stretch taught by almost all cats and dogs. So again, my thigh bones are perpendicular to earth angle. My hips stay high. And my, my butt is attached to a harness. <laughs> TMI. And I'm just going to sink down into cat. I'm going to do a cat. Now, some people, generally, especially women, are very, they have a much deeper lordotic lower back curve. And maybe your uh, ribs come all the way down. But don't overdo it because this is Buddha middle ground class. Remember, Buddha could had everything and had nothing and decided medium was better.
this pose looks kind of like bowing or oblation or worshiping, doesn't it? Hi, Kitty. Hi, babe. <clears throat> okay, my friends, and let's get out of this pickle. And we're going to sit together for a moment. We're going to move it around a little bit, practicing every pose is a prayer. Every pose is a, every pose is like a prayer. I'm totally reverting to 80s Madonna songs. I loved the 80s. I'll tell you, I had the big hair and everything. Now from here, we're going to, we're going to plant our feet and we're going to bottoms up. We're going to stretch the front of our body, a little back bend, not a big one, a little one, lift up, head back, butt up. And we'll sink down. Now for the next part of the sequence, I'm grabbing one of my yoga blankets. Did you know I had over 100 yoga blankets from my yoga studio? <clears throat> if you wanted me to open a yoga studio, where would you like it to be? Costa Rica, let's go. Okay, now I just want, we're gonna, I went to a Greg class and a reflexology class broke out. So I'd like for you to rub the middle center bottom of your feet. If it feels good, it's okay. All the while I'm relaxing my groinage, my knees are kind of pressing down. I'm leaning forward into my feet. This is where the elite meet to smell their feet. And by massaging the middle center bottom of our feet, we're working on the heart lung center of our nervous system. Good, hold steady pressure. Go steady with yourself. Be going steady with yourself. Do you get it? Being steady on the inside of yourself, not agitated, not flighty, steady. Don't you appreciate the steady people in your life? The people who are predictable, calm, peaceful, stable, rooted, grounded. Don't you like being that way yourself? Okie doke, my friends. All right. And the counter pose. Bring your knees in together. Pull your heels into your bottom like a four-year-old does easily. Wrap around your knees, rewrap a couple of times. We call this burping the Tupperware. And just hold on loosely. Squeeze the S out of yourself, the stuffing. Shoulders relax. We're in the ohm stretch, you guys. We're in the ohm stretch. Good. Now, as a visual description, we're getting ready to do this pose on our back. Okay, my knees are really bent. I'm trying to pull my knees behind me. Now, it's one thing to do this pose balancing on my coccyx, my tail feathers, but it's so much more Sunday and yin and relaxing and releasing and calming to do happy baby on your back. So I'm going to put a little banky underneath my neck and we're going to do happy baby and Release our <clears throat> undercarriages together. It's one of my favorite yin poses. I might have invented this. I got a sneaking suspicion that people have been doing this pose for as long as there have been people. And the knees are on the floor, the butt is down, the shoulders are relaxed, the chin is dropped, the back of the neck is unfurling and I'll tell you if you if you do this pose for a minute or two every day it's different after two minutes than it is at the start stuff 
starts to happen. It will never happen if we don't practice peace. You feel your sacrum, the triangular shaped bone at the base of your spine. It starts to relax. Your lower back actually starts to rise up as your booty relaxes. The shoulders start to soften. These are all the ways into our parasympathetic nervous system. And interesting images start to float through your mind as you start to go into theta brainwave state. Poodles riding unicycles, full moon, Eiffel Tower, you know, images. Clocks melting off the side of kitchen tables. Archetypes. Okay, now for relief, legs will float up unhindered, and then we'll just get side splits in on a Sunday. Banana splits, ankles five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, and come up. Hello again. Now we're going to finish with a delicious, sumptuous, gratuitous, and other gratuitous words. We're going to do a restorative twist together. It's one of my favorites. I hope you like it. It involves a bolster. I bet you have a bolster, a big, big old blanket that you use. If you don't have a bolster, remember, Greg will give you a bolster, but you have to buy him a cup of coffee. All right. Now from here, you got the thing out in front, just poke myself in the eye. That's practicing peace, isn't it? Now we're gonna spin our knees to the left. Whoop. I'm sliding the side of my right hip in. I'm putting my right hand on the bolster, see that? Now I'm sliding my ankles and knees around behind me. I'm crossing my ankles and pulling my heels into my bottom. And I'm turning my chest to the front and putting my hands on the bolster and pushing back. And you know what I call this pose, mermaid pose. This is what the lady on the chicken of the sea can is doing. She's sitting like this. I'm leaning back. I'm not a mermaid. I'm a mermail, so I'm not so good at this pose. Now my right hand's going to go over here. And then we're going to take our bolster um, one, one hour over to one o'clock. We're gonna turn our chest down, our legs are pinned behind us. And at the last second, we're gonna do the easy ear, the right ear, the elbows will spread out. And we're going to do two minutes of restorative, finishing, ecstatic, sumptuous, delicious, peaceful twist. Stop thinking. Get out of your own way. Now, if we were at the yoga studio and you get to decide where I'm going to put it, I'd put five, six, ten sandbags on you. I would just, if the levee breaks, you'd be safe underneath sandbags.
Okay, biggest, deepest inhale of your whole life so far, encompassing your whole story. Inhale. Ah, oh, exhale. Oh. Releasing weeks, months, years, lifetimes of accumulated bondage of small cell. Okay, let's pull our paw parts in. And as pleasurable as that was, it's nice to, there's pleasure doing it the other way. So we'll move our bolsters back hither. And we'll sit in front, square things up. <laughs> my cat loves my drum kit. It is paradise for a cat. Now, turn your knees all the way to the right. Bring your left side of your bun in, left paw here. Fold knees and ankles tightly around behind you. I recommend twisting left ankle over right, twisty tie. Now push into the bolster, lean back, mermaid pose. Now left hand over here. We'll take our bolster over to 11 o'clock. Now our legs and buns are pinned behind us. We'll turn our chest down. And last second, we'll go to left ear. What do you say? And we'll totes veg together for two, three minutes. I give you permission to leave the world behind. Go to the, go someplace else. In my father's house are many mansions.
Okay, exhale all the air out. Stay in the pose and take a big inhale. Fill up the whole container. Exhale, let it all go. Release the narrative. Let go of who you think you are so you can remember who you are. Okay, kids, and then one more sit up together. Not a sit up, but we'll sit up together. This is just a momentary precursor to the ecstasy of doing vegetable pose together. So I was wondering if you would chant OM with me one more time because I love vibrating with my friends. So we're gonna do a long, extended, beautiful, throaty OM. Big inhale. Oh. Feel that. Let Sat Chit Ananda yoga, ecstasy, bliss, love, and joy percolate from head to toes. And I would bet that you'll like this. I'll bet you're going to like this pose. My knees are going to go over my bolster. My neck's going to go over this blanket. And the rest of me is going to go to the moon actually over the moon. So we're gonna do six minutes of Shavasana together. And if you get in the pose too, you get in the pose at the same time, we'll do a little checklist together. We're gonna to wiggle our ankles and spread our feet a little further apart. I'm gonna lift my left and right butt cheek and wiggle a little bit to get any dents out of my bottom. Then my shoulder blades. I'm going palms up because it makes me feel more opener. Swallow once, gulp. Relax my face. Let my eyes roll back. Dissolve my brain. And we're in. And I shan't bother you for six happy minutes.
Okay, beautiful friends, stay in the pose, relax even more, I invite you. <clears throat> and this is from the Church of Greg, where if you'd like to invite God, love, source, being, infinite, higher, organizing wisdom into yourself, whatever name you give to the nameless, we can do that now. It's always a choice. It's always an option. Never coerced or convinced, but freely opening and inviting ourselves to the origin or source of being. Good. Then if you decided to say that prayer with me, wiggle your fingers and toes and circulate extra super feel God through yourself. Feel God and feel good are obviously closely related. Nice deep breath back in your bod, back in your spacesuit. And draw your knees in and curl onto your right side when you're ready. We practice patience and peace all class. We can continue that um, for the rest of our lives. Love all over yourself. That's what I say. Even love what's unlovable about you. That's true love, isn't it? Loving the unlovable. Now with eyes closed, we'll sit up together, keeping our eyes closed, because I said that our eyes were closed. And we stack up our new and improved spines nice and tall. Our shoulders are relaxed. Our brains have stopped thinking. Our chin relaxes down. We feel holy, sacred, reverent, and above all, connected together. Hands into our hearts. All together, the mighty Sunday yogis, we all say, Namah Sunday, Namaste.